Stan Jibalisco here with a little storm update. Looks like we've got power back. That uh, light right there it was connected to the main utility line. I didn't have that going to my generator. I still got the generator running though. I, don't, I expect there's going to be intermittent power outages throughout this storm. That uh, is the uh, it's a tapestry I got down at Deadwood Dicks. I always fancy myself living in that apartment up there above the restaurant de la Cologne. Is that how you pronounce it? In Paris. Where all of the uh, cool people hang out. <clears throat> all of the posers. All of the would-be literati. Where the real literati do things like sit up in apartments over fancy hoity-toity coffee shops and flick spitballs down at them. Well, I've been through all that nonsense before. But I learned a lesson here, a very important lesson. Now, there's my thermostat. You can see that it. I've actually got the heat off right now. The fan is running, but the heat is off. You can't really see the focus. But the temperature in this, in this nerd castle, uh, in this living room here, is approaching 90 degrees because of that wood stove underneath here. So, uh, you know, I just wear my shirt sleeves and enjoy it. That is the instruction manual for my furnace. I had to look up the flash codes because the thing malfunctioned on that generator, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because the very same thing may happen to you if you use an arrangement similar to this. My generator has what is known as a floating neutral, and I know that for two reasons. Number one, the resistance between the neutral line and the ground line is infinity when I measure it with the generator off. It's a floating neutral, and the other reason is that when I started fiddling around with that neutral to effect a repair here, I got a shock. Now, if I got a shock, so can alignment if you have back feed in your arrangement. That is why, that is one of the reasons I harped on that. Do not back feed because you think, uh, you think just because the neutral line is grounded, well, you do, do you think so? Normally it might be, but with your generator, it might not be. You really never know. You gotta test these things. Now here is the arrangement. What I've got now there's that transient suppressor, and the furnace is plugged into the generator power strip, and I've got a temporary kludge here. It's not really very professional. I'm going to have to wire something up a little harder once uh, the storm clears and I can go get the supplies. But that block tap there, I uh, kludged a short, a short circuit wire between the ground, the third prong in the plug, and the neutral line leading to the generator. I recall when I tested this before, this transient suppressor has two lights on it. You can't really see them down there now. One of them says transient protection is functional. The other one says the system is grounded. Well, the one that said the system was grounded was off when I tested this uh, furnace with the generator, but I didn't think anything of it. And apparently the furnace didn't either. I guess I don't recall whether I actually tried to run the furnace because it was summer and it was hot, and I don't know if that thing even started up. But anyway, this furnace has some flash codes on it. There's your flash codes. That intermittent flash at about a one second interval like that indicates that there's no call for heat. Well, I should think not if it's 90 degrees up there. But here's the deal, and here's something that everybody ought to know. If that little uh, indicator light, just out of curiosity, I wanted to see if the furnace would fire up on this generator, and it wouldn't. And I checked that light, and there was nine flashes and then a pause, nine flashes and then a pause. And it turned out, when I looked it up in that instruction manual I just showed you upstairs, that indicates the igniter isn't functioning. The reason, probable reason, they said was a ground fault. So I corrected that ground fault, and the last time I tested it, it did function. 
Uh, but, uh, the power has come back on. I'm just not so sure I trust it. Uh, this is a very intense uh, storm, and it's blizzard conditions down in the prairies. Uh, we could easily lose power again. Uh, the, the storm still has several hours to go. Some official measurements now are 22 inches. I'd say that's about right. There we go upstairs. and Well, this will just about do it for this video, but there's the two lessons. If your generator has a floating neutral and you try to run a furnace with an igniter off of it, that igniter might not work. It did not in my case. It did, be, uh, it, it, uh, it did before, I don't know why I didn't this time, but I kludged it up. Looks like we're good to go. Anyway, uh, the wood stove's taking care of everything for the duration of this storm, but I don't want to have to call, you know, the service department. Uh, hey, my refrigerator's running again. I put my Diet Mountain Dew outside where it's 35 degrees because thinking nothing worse than warm Diet Mountain Dew in the middle of the night. Shoot, that's awful. Well, I'm going to leave it out there, because. but there's the instruction manual. It tells you all those flash codes. I've seen a number of those flash codes pop up from time to time. It's good to know what they mean. Sometimes you can actually correct the problem yourself, and by golly, there isn't nobody coming out here to help me today. Nobody's going nowhere. I don't know if even emergency personnel might have to use snow machines in order to get around today. But that's the storm update. It's almost 3 o'clock now on October 4th. Hopefully in another 12 hours or so, this thing will wind down. And then, uh, I guess, well, hopefully. You never know. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Stan Gibalisco from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. There's my breakfast for tomorrow in case we have another power failure. So long.